them generally man by man according to the script. Here is the script of every man's name, which is thought fit through all the vessels, to play in our interlude before the Duke and Duchess on his wedding day. First, good Peter Quince, say what the play treats on, then read the names of the actors, and so grow to a point. Ah, marry our play is the most lamentable comedy and most cruel death of pyramids and pity. A very good piece of work, I assure you, and they marry. Now, good Peter Quince, go forth your actors by the scroll. Masters, spread yourselves. Answer us, I call you. Dick Bottom, the weaver? Ready. Name what part I am for, and proceed. You, Dick Bottom, are set down for Pyramus. What is Pyramus? A lover or a tyrant? It is a lover that kills himself, most gallant beloved. That will require some tears in the true performing of it. If I do it, let the audience look to their eyes. I will move storms. I will condole in some measure. <laughs> to the rest, yet my chief humor is for a tyrant. I can play Hercules rarely, for a part to tear a cat in to make all split. <clears throat> the raging rocks and shivering shocks shall break the locks of prison gates, and Phoebus car shall shine from far and make and mar the foolish fate. This was lofty. Now name the rest of the players. Remember, this is Erkley's vein, a tyrant's vein. A lover is more condoling. Francis Flute, the bellows mender. Here, be the prince. You, Flute, want to take this beyond you. What is this be? A wandering knight? It is the lady that Pyramus must love. 
me play a woman, I have a beard coming. That small one, you shall claim to the mast, and you may speak as small as you will. I may hide my face, let me play peerless, too. I'm Fisby, I'll speak in a monstrous little voice. Fisney, Fisney. Oh, fearless, my little dear, my Fisby dear, my lady dear. No, no, you must play peerless, and won't you, Fisby? Well, proceed. Robin Starfleet, the tailor? Here, Peter Twins. You, Starling, must play Fisby's mother. Tom Stout Tinker. Here, Peter Twins. You, Pierre, Mrs. Father. Myself, Fisby's father. Snub the joiner. You, the lion's part. And I hope here we play fitted. I be the lion's part written straight. If it be, give it me for I'm still study. You may do it at Stenpor, for it is nothing but roar. Let me play the lion, too. <laughs> I will roar that I'll do any man's heart good to hear me. I will roar so that the dupe will say, let him roar again, let him roar again. And you would do it too terribly, for you would fright the Duchess and the ladies, and they would shriek. And that were enough to hang us all. That, that would hang us to every mother's, mother's son. I pray you, masters, if you fright the ladies out of their wits, they would have no discretion but to hang us. But I will aggravate my voice so, I will roar to you as gently as any sucking dove. I will roar to you as twere any nightingale. You can play no part for Pyramus, for Pyramus is a sweet-faced man, and one you would see on a summer's day, a very lovely, gentleman-like man. Therefore, you must needs play Pyramus. Well... I will undertake it. What beard were I best to play it in? Why, what you will. I will discharge me into your straw-colored beard, your orange tawny beard, your purple ingrain beard, or your French crown color beard, your perfect yellow. Some of your French crowns have no hair at all, and then you'd play a bare face man. But masters, here are your points. And I entreat you, request you, desire you, to con them by tomorrow night and meet me in the palace wood, one mile without a there we will rehearse, for if we rehearse in the city, we will be dog company, and our device is known. But in the meantime, I will create a bill of property, such as our play warrants. I pray you, masters, fail me not. We will meet, and there we rehearse most obscenely and courageously. <laughs> Take pains, be perfect, adieu. At the Duke's own convenience. Enough! Hold or cut bowstrings. 